Gothic Red, brand new wine, first vintage they've made it, it's actually a Gallo wine. I know, you say Gallo, most people think of their, uh, you know, kind of jug wine sort of image, but um, Gallo have really been making a lot of changes, launching wines like this, uh, you won't find Gallo actually mentioned anywhere on the label, if you go on the website for uh, Pothic Wines, you won't find Gallo kind of mentioned anywhere on there. And Gallo, I think, still has this sort of jug wine image, you know, you say Gallo, you still think of the jug wines for, for most consumers, but Gallo make a ton of different wines, and most people probably don't even know they're drinking a Gallo wine. In this one, in particular, they're using uh, Merlot from their Fry, uh, yeah, from their Fry Brothers, uh, Fry Brothers is one of their uh, Sonoma wineries, using Merlot from Fry Brothers, they're using Zinfandel from their Rancho Zabaco winery, and, uh, what was it, Syrah. The other one, uh, Syrah from their Bridalwood, uh, Bridalwood Estate Winery. So Merlot, Syrah, and Zin should give you a uh, fairly complex wine, fairly sort of marketable label. They leave launch their Facebook page. What was it? A couple of months ago, something like that. They've already built it up to like four thousand fans. So I'm not bad in a couple of months. Not heavily distributed either. It's uh, just kind of been a slow release into the market from what I've seen. I don't know too many places that are carrying it. Retails around about 10 to 12 dollars if you can find it. I would guess that you're definitely going to start seeing it on a lot of restaurant wine lists. A lot of red fruit on the nose. A ton of vanilla, just a lot of vanilla. And I think it alludes to... Da, 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 da. Complemented by hints of vanilla. I don't think hints at all. I think there's a ton of vanilla just on the nose. It's just like, yeah, so much vanilla. Yeah, very, uh, very light, yeah, pretty light colour. Really, uh, little bit of, like, residual sugar there. Definitely not sweet, like what you call a sweet red wine. But, um, uh, fairly complex as well. That's what I'd probably call a approachable style. For maybe, I don't know, younger generation, the millennials, or whatever that's trying to get into wine, it's the perfect wine for it. There's that like hint of sweetness there, but not overwhelmingly so. It's a nice step from white wines into red wines, I would say. Really more red fruits, I would say, than, than black fruits. A little bit of spice there, tiny bit of uh, like chocolate, maybe like just like bitter chocolate. And that vanilla really, really continues all the way through. Medium, medium finish. Actually, I'd compare this to something like, you know, again, shock horror, like Menage a Trois, but, I, you know, kind of a step up in, uh, if you've ever had Menage a Trois, the, like, three great blend, straight California, again, I would, I would say this is kind of a step up from uh, uh, Folio Dew's uh, Menage a Trois, kind of a more of a grocery store wine, but I wouldn't be shocked if you see the, uh, the Apothic Red starting to pop up in uh, a little bit more mainstream retailers, so give it a try, like I say, I think it was around 10 to $12 retail Apothic Red, Straight Californian blend. Cheers.